Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to record Photoshop using Open Broadcaster Studio on Windows 10 for time-lapse purposes. If you're running Windows 7, you'll have to see an earlier video I did about recording Photoshop using Open Broadcaster Classic. Um, Windows 10 removed Windows Arrow, which handled transparencies inside of Windows 7, and as such it removed a lot of graphical glitches that happen when we try to record Photoshop. So for Windows 10, all you have to do is go to their website, download the latest edition of Open Broadcaster Studio, and then you're ready to get started. So the first time you boot up Open Broadcaster Studio, you're greeted with this screen. Black screen that is your viewport that you're seeing, and your scenes, sources, and settings over here. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to click this plus button, and we are going to add a new scene. You can call this whatever we want. I'll just call this Photoshop. And next, we can add sources. Sources are what we're recording from our computer, and they can be any number of things. They can be anything from pure audio, to pre-rendered videos, to window capture, video card capture if you have a device. Anyway, there's a huge amount of options. The only thing we care about, however, is the display capture option. So we're going to call this, um, I'm running this on a Cintiq, so I'm going to call my display capture Cintiq, and we're going to boot it up. If you click on this drop-down menu, you can see I'm running two monitors, and I can actively select which one I wish to record on. So the um, this is my Cintiq screen and I'm going to make sure that Capture Cursor is selected and hit OK. So now you can see a live preview of what's going on on my desktop and my monitor that I'm actively capturing. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into the Settings menu over here and get this set up so uh, your file sizes are as small as possible for editing. So when you open up the Settings panel, you'll see we've got our tabs over here on the left and our main settings on the right. Now, in the general settings, there's nothing that's actually important. The only thing that I change is the theme to dark because I just think it looks much better. Um, but for the sake of this, I'll leave it on default. So the next tab we were, are going to jump to is the video tab. Now you can see we've got our canvas size, our rescaled resolution size that it will save to a video file, um, which you can change around and play with depending on the specs of your computer. However, Whenever you're downscaling, you're going to lose some quality, but for the most part, it's not going to make much of a difference. So over, or down here rather, you can see we have common FPS values, and if we click this tab menu, we can see we have a range from 10 to 60 in all the standard frames. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to click this arrow and select integer FPS value. And we can set it to any number we want, depending on how long you're recording, say, it's a 10 hour video and you intend to compress it down to one hour or 10 minutes, you can have incredibly low frame per second values. Um, for the most part, my videos that I record are about five to six hours long, and I have a tendency to use anywhere between three and six frames per second. So I'm just going to set it to six. You can set it to whatever number you want, but since we intend to speed up our video after it's recorded, the frame rate will be increased. So for an example, if I record a video that's 60 minutes long and I speed it up 10 times, 6 frames per second becomes 60 frames per second. So this is what I generally record at as 6. Anyway, we're going to jump to the next tab, which is the output tab. Now this is where a lot of the magic happens. Um, and it's kind of a confusing menu. So the first thing we're going to do is from the output mode, we are going to select advanced. Now you can see we have three separate tabs. We have a stream, streaming tab, a recording tab, and an audio tab. For time lapses, I don't record any audio, and I don't do any streaming actively. So we're just going to click to the recording tab. So here you can see we've got type, standard, and custom output. We're just going to leave it on standard. We can change the recording path of where we want to export our videos to after they have finished recording and saving. Now we get to the recording format. There's lots of different formats. For the most part, formats are containers and they contain the same amount of information and most video editing software will be able to open it. The most supported is MP4 or MKV. They also have the bonus of being incredibly small file sizes. Um, however, I edit my recordings using a program called DaVinci Resolve, which is free to use um, and its main kind of 
format importing its codec importer does not play nice with the MP4 codec. It only plays nice with the MOV codec because it uses Apple's QuickTime format for the H.264 decoding. Anyway, if you're going to use DaVinci, it has to be recorded in MOV. Um, yeah, not much of a quality difference between any of these, just use what works for you. Um, next, we're going to select the encoder. Now you see there's a couple of different encoders that I have here. I just use the standard AX264. It works fine. The file sizes are tiny. Doesn't really matter. Now, as we go down here to this tab, this is kind of all the advanced options tabs for the most part. Um, this top one called rate control is what we're going to mess with. So you've got a bunch of different options. Constant bit rate, which you can select to a custom amount, which might be good enough for you. Um, or a variable bit rate, which might be nice if you're streaming. But what I've found to work best for me is using the CRF. And basically, the higher this number is, the lower quality it is. So the lower the number, the more lossless it is, and as such, the larger the file size is. A CFR of 20 or 21 is pretty good quality, and if you're using it to record something very intensive like a game, your file sizes are going to be pretty big. But because we're recording Photoshop and if we're doing speed paintings, most of the file, or a good section of the time, isn't going to have a lot of information that's actively changing. The canvas or the um, toolboxes will not really move, and for the most part it will just be the canvas, a very small section of our screen. So we can get away with setting the CRF very low. Now this is a good thing. I, for the most part, depending on the videos that I'm making, will use anywhere between 15 and 21. Um, as you can see, I have it set to 18 here, which is a good middle ground between those two. And that's what this is recording at on my other window of OBS, which is right here. So after that's set and you've got your output all set, that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. Now you're just ready to open Photoshop and start recording. Now I will say, um, if you experience bugs inside of Photoshop, Windows 10 plays pretty nice with Photoshop, um, though there have been some reports of people just having things that don't work that great for them. Maybe the transparencies will be screwed up. Um, there's only been a couple of people with very particular graphic cards that I've been able to find, but for the most part, if OBS Studio doesn't work for you and you have any glitches whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment below or message me through YouTube, and I'll be happy to give you a hand. Anyway, until next time, happy recording, happy painting. DRC out. Hey, thanks for watching to the end of the video. If you like the video, feel free to leave a like. If you want to keep up with me and see what I'm doing when I'm actually working on it, feel free to follow me on Twitter or Instagram below.